It's my feel good breakfast show. All right, welcome back. We are live on SABC3. This is your feel good breakfast show. Now, we're often told to avoid eating raw meat or raw chicken or undercooked pork for fear of something called salmonella and other parasites out there. Now, they also say that too much of raw fish can lead to worms, but how much of this is true, Zoe? And how much could we really rely on or should we be watching out for? Good thing our resident Dr. Darren Green is here for our weekly health segment to set our minds at ease with regards to food parasites. Mm -hmm. Dr. Darren Green, always great Good to morning. have you here. Good morning. Yes, mm -hmm. and of course, yeah. Yeah, well, keep our number on uh, close by. Our number is 0839133728 if you have any questions regarding food parasites. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start first, Dr. Darren, with, with pork. For those of us that do eat pork, uh, you're told to not eat it too rare, especially as kids. I think a lot of kids uh, hear that um, for fear that it'll give you worms. Mm. Is this true? Because there's not. You know, I was always told they really? eat raw pork. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, certainly, worms are a real part of. Uh, basically infestation with parasites, mm. specifically in pork. And is our ever more popular in certain areas or regions? The Transkei, for example, okay. uh, in the Eastern Cape, a very well-known area for eating contaminated pork. And we see clinically, obviously in practice, the effects of that mm. with people's worm manifestations that go to the brain and cause neurocysticercosis. So uh, the worms are the big issue here when it comes to pork. And, uh, oh, that looks uh, very appetizing, doesn't That's it? Raw. It does. <laughs> it's raw at the moment. But, you know, whether you're eating casla chops or bacon or what have you, you need to understand that you need to know where it's coming from. So yes. the worms, basically, you ingest uh, either the egg, uh, the egg form of the life cycle of the worm, which is called tinea solium. It's a, it's a flat worm. It can grow up to 10 meters long. Oh, That's right, 10 here. meters. So if you ingest the eggs, you ingest the eggs, and then they migrate all over the body, to the lungs, to the brain, etc. And then, obviously, there they form larva that can then wriggle out of the little cysts and then obviously lead to clinical manifestations. If you ingest the, the larva stage or the cyst stage, it hatches in your tummy and the worms then obviously move from there. Mm. That's their point of, dis of dispersion. So certainly uh, pork as a carrier of, of, of that specific tapeworm is a very well-known fact. Mm -hmm. What are some of the symptoms we need to look out for if, if that had been the case? For, for sure. So I think uh, for that specific, that for basically flat worms, as I say, you can imagine up to 10 meters of worm folded mm -hmm. up inside of you. Uh, you can either have, <laughs> I can see you grossing yeah. out there. I want to stretch my hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can either block the intestines, if it's hatched in the intestines, it can, uh, mm. it can lead to an uh, abdominal uh, cramping, obstruction of the bowel, etc. Okay. Anemia over a long period of time. If, however, the, the larvae move to your brain and they hatch there, you, you have what's called cysticercosis, which can lead to a whole lot of neurological symptoms, including wow. epilepsy, for example. Um, so, you know, there, there are a host of symptoms depending on which system is involved. Yeah. The gut and intestinal being quite, quite uh, common. And then, of course, the lungs. You can imagine if, if the worm uh, crawls up and then goes down into the airway and your trachea can affect your breathing at night time. Mm. And often you'll hear of moms talking about worms coming out of their children's noses while they sleep. And it's quite gross. They often come to the clinics, in our state clinics as well, with a plastic bag with the worms in them to show us what they actually what found, and, which is useful because we then know how to treat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, to food preparation, obviously this is crucial information. Now I'm thankful my grandmother used to feed me brook lugs on the week. Does <laughs> eat brook lugs use worms? The, never, chocolate, never, the chocolate work. Because I never believed it. I never, like, when you say these things, it's, no. it's super scary. But is it a problem that's only associated with, with pork? Or is, is it the same with no, lamb you get a and host beef? Of, a, a host of different uh, foodstuffs. So whether you're looking at beef, lamb, pork, you get different uh, zoonotic relationships, in other words, organisms that can cause uh, infection in the different meat types and raw, uncooked products. Even things like eggs and milk and unpasteurized cider, for those of you that like, you know, frequenting uh, with a bit of a cider. If it's unpasteurized, milk, raw eggs, you can also get uh, other manifestations. Sure. Maybe, Maybe that explains why Salt Bay slaps his meat before he cooks it, just to beat <laughs> all of the, the, the larvae yeah. out or whatever. No. All of it out. It's what not a so proven scientific <laughs> method of doing it. Well, if you have a question or a comment, <laughs> for Dr. Darren Green. Give us a call. Our number is 083-913-3728. We're going to continue our conversation around food parasites and also touching on fish and sushi uh, in a little bit with the doctor. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back. Your feel-good breakfast show live on SABC3. We're talking all about meat parasites, all while Zoe is wearing quite a salmon-coloured shirt. Yes, we, we thought I that am. might be quite nice uh, fitting to the theme. Dr. Oh. Darren Green is also in the house. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we opened up the lines for you to call us on 083-913-3728. We were talking about fish and sushi earlier on with Dr. Darren Green, and I was wondering, can you actually eat too much sushi? You can, actually, and your risks of not knowing where it comes from or how it was uh, caught and defrosted is also important. You know, in summer months, we find a lot of food poisoning. That's the, the bottom line. Salmonella is rife this, this time of the year because of the, the storage of food, the transport of food, and, and also the defrosting techniques. Mm. So sushi, as you know, can become quite dangerous if you leave it in the heat for a long period of time. Don't eat it the next day if you left it out on the countertop all night. I can't oh, no. eat leftover sushi. So, I mean, that's, sushi. that's, yeah, and it doesn't look the same. It just doesn't <laughs> have the same appeal. That look on the it's other hand. It's just those rands that you've spent on it that make you go, I have to try <laughs> have to finish and it. eat it finished. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, it does definitely uh, put you at risk. Um, and you also need to understand that, you know, the, the different types of, of fish carry different bugs or eggs for a different parasites. Mm -hmm. So buy sushi from a reputable place where you know the, the, the method of preparation is good mm -hmm. and fresh fish is actually caught. Okay. Well, we do have a caller, Niels from Pulakwane. Niels from Punakwane, are you there? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Uh, what's your question or comment for the doctor? Uh, I was at the clinic and they told me there's two eggs between the brain lobes in the main vein. They said they killed it, but since then I keep on falling. All right, we it hurt myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. So he's describing uh, a lesion where it sounds like some parasite or worm form has been identified, mm -hmm. or a larva or an egg of that has been identified mm -hmm. in the brain. Yes. And the most common one that we know of, obviously, is cystisarcosis that I mentioned from pork and tinea, mm -hmm. um, which forms a little larva in the brain. We then give medication to the patient to actually kill, kill that larva. So medication goes into the blood, travels to the brain to kill it. But in that response, you have an inflammatory response with swelling around that larva that's being killed and, mm -hmm. you know, as it goes through its dying stages. So you can also imagine that swelling on the surface of the brain can lead to symptoms as well. If someone's load and the amount of these lesions or eggs or larva in the brain is mm -hmm. so high, you can actually make it worse by treating them with the anti uh, the antiparasitic agent. So you need to monitor them carefully and have perhaps steroids along with that. Mm -hmm. So it would depend here whether it was cystisarcosis or toxoplasmosis, which is another organism uh, that is particularly associated with cats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so a very important what would you condition. Recommend for so I'd recommend that he lets his clinician know, his uh, neurologist or his physician that that actually diagnosed it. Uh, and if he's falling and having falling episodes, it could be related, obviously, to swelling around that area that was treated and he might have other causes that are leading him to fall besides the actual worm eggs that mm. have been treated in the brain so definitely go back and let your doctor know that you need to do something about it all okay. right well uh, we'll continue our conversation with dr darren green and we'll keep our lines open on 0839133728 and a question that i want to ask when we come back is that other than being a very attractive female name what exactly is salmonella <laughs> Indeed, and a question we've been avoiding that I think a lot of parents out there might have uh, regarding parasites and food is what happens, Dr. Darren Green, when you see your child doing this? They quite scratch. a lot, and they, they scratch quite a lot because... Shake, and dogs as well, by and the way. Dogs so do it too. Kitties and dogs. So you find that the, the parasites' eggs are basically released into the stool, mm -hmm. and then when the stool is uh, excreted, basically, you have those eggs gathering at, at the, the, the rim of the anus. Right. And those eggs then cause uh, an inflammatory reaction with histamine and a lot of itching and irritation at that area. And it's a, a terrible irritation, so they just want to get rid of it, and that's why they start digging and rubbing up against things, and mm. it can be quite, quite debilitating. So don't ignore those signs. Take a look firstly, and if it persists, Certainly, go and see the doctor. They actually often take a, a swab or a biopsy mm -hmm. and they can actually identify the, the little eggs under the microscope. Uh -huh. And then you confirm the diagnosis mm -hmm. and treat it, obviously, quickly. Okay. Right. Well, we've got another caller on the line. Uh, Terence from Joburg, good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. What's your comment or question for the doctor? Morning. Doctor, um, I wonder if you can help me. I suffer extremely with mouth abscesses over the last 
six weeks, I've had three of them. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned mouth abscesses. Yes. So an abscess yeah. or a boil uh, is normally caused by a collection of pus that's encapsulated or closed. Okay. It's a pimple that's closed up somewhere. When it comes to the mouth specifically, uh, that most common site is under the teeth. A tooth abscess. Mm -hmm. So one would want to look at your teeth, the condition of the teeth, are there any cavities that need to be treated, obviously, or does he have an underlying condition that predisposes him to lesions or, or uh, basically ulcers or things in the mouth that can get secondary infection and form abscesses. Mm -hmm. So an oral hygienist is a good place to start and your dentist okay. uh, who can advise and assess that for him and then uh, take it from there. Okay. All right. Thank you so, so much for that question there. I wanted to ask, the craze of, you know, a lot of people that are working out want to eat healthy, so they eat chicken breasts, but there was this craze of having them kind or of fillet, rare, so. yeah, rare cooked, but then salmonella comes into play there. How, of course. How well should you cook, your chicken be cooked to not get salmonella, and what happens when you have it? The word moist, we all love when yes, it comes to, to meat. You don't want it to be chewy, you don't want your chicken to be uh, too firm that, you know, that you just dry. dry. You want it juicy, mm -hmm. so, but you also don't want your chicken to be pink and you don't want to be able to see oh the veins and blood that is raw. That, raw. that looks like like seared tuna actually yeah. but that's actually chicken so that's obviously a little bit concerning because you know if you ask the 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 chefs they'll tell you that you need to try and get the the temperature up to about 75 degrees when preparing chicken yes. uh, at least and then the middle obviously can't be raw so the defrosting technique is important as i mentioned we mm -hmm. also mentioned what temperature is the chicken before you cook it you know, when it's hot like this, because we defrost it on the sink or in a bowl yes. and we leave it out all night. Uh, and that's important. So definitely take, take heed of the fact that specifically people who are compromised or have a low immunity should be very wary of consuming uh, raw meat. Sure. Mm. Well, we're word. speaking about raw meat. I've also heard that, you know, pregnant ladies need to be careful of raw meat, stay away from sushi. Is that true? Yeah, so sushi, there are two, two sides to that story. Uh, obviously, the amount of sushi you consume is important, but, you know, for the risk involved of mercury poisoning. Uh, so if you're eating lots of sushi and you love it, and you can imagine then the effect of raising the mercury levels in your blood, it crosses the placenta and can cause birth defects in your baby and even miscarriages. So that, along with the risk, obviously, of contracting parasite infections from, the, from those fish. All right. Well, Dr. Darren Green, thank you so, so much. You can follow the good doctor on social media at Dr. Darren Green. And as always, it was nice to have this little meeting with Great, you. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's head on over to Leanne.